got me? Oh, me. So, what to say about Canada? Man, I, the last time I was in Canada was Halloween 2019. And we decided to go up for a late season hunt. Um, and we got froze out. And that was the year we got sent to North Dakota. And we just kind of, man, we had a bitter taste in our mouth. We got them in North Dakota, but it was a hard trip. And uh, man, it wasn't long after that just February, right after that trip, February 20, that COVID rolled in and Trudeau closed the border. And so the whole year of 2020 and half of 21, we've been locked out of Canada. And I'd be lying if I said that trip in 19 didn't leave that bitter taste in my mouth and I wanted to go back, get my peace. And uh, so kind of leading up to this one, I mean, there's two years of sort of pent up anxiety and just man just wanting to get back to the prairie really and uh, and then there was all the drama with the border and would it be open and and then it finally opened you had to have a vaccine and kind of all this stuff so when we left the house there was so many things that were still unknown we had all taken our test um, our PCR test but we didn't have our results and we weren't going to get our results until we were nearly at the border and so there's four guys in a truck pulling a trailer and a bunch of folks flying up there expecting to hunt with us. And, uh, you know, we don't know whether we're going to test positive or negative. So when we pulled out, you talk about tension and anxiety and like a nervous excitement. It was, it was next level for sure. Um, and along the way, you know, that evening, we all got our test results back and we were clear. And, uh, and so we kept heading on and we got about to the border and um, one of the guys that was coming up to hunt with us made a comment that his passport was expired. And I thought to myself, Geesh, it's been a long time since I got my passport. I should probably check my passport. And I had, all my stuff was together, and it was organized, it was in the console of truck, so I was riding shotgun, Kirk was driving, and I reached over in there and got my passport out, my vaccine card, and I looked at it, and sure enough, my passport was expired. August 1st, 2011 is when I'd gotten my passport. And so it expired this year, August 1st, 21. So kind of my heart sank and we started making some phone calls and long story short, they said, if you get here to the border, we'll, we'll let you cross. And so we drove the final couple hours and they, after going through everything, the trailer, they let us cross. And when we got across the border, you know, that was kind of the first deep uh, breath, fresh air, kind of, this is going to be all right. And uh, we were excited and optimistic and all that. And we started heading up kind of northwest our direction. And the further we drove, the drier and the drier it got. And the fewer and fewer birds that we saw. Um, but it was kind of a weird time of day. And so I wasn't really expecting to see a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but we rolled in that evening about 9 o'clock and um, got a good night's sleep, decided that we'd attack it the next morning. And man, the next morning when we got up to scout, it was amazing how dry it was. So we scouted basically, I don't know, we scouted the first five or six hours that, that morning, planning on hunting the following morning for the first time. And we found a few things, but, but not a lot. And, and nobody really wanted to say it, after kind of overcoming all the stuff it took to get up there, nobody really wanted to admit that they were disappointed, but we were disappointed. There's almost no water. I mean, there's no water, there's almost no ducks. And uh, we'd even found a few spots that had a little bit of water that didn't have ducks. And uh, we seen a bunch of geese, a lot of specks, um, and quite a few cranes. And so we knew that we had some options. We knew that we'd be able to, to have some hunts, you know, but I mean, in our heart, we're duck hunters. And so we, we drove 30 hours to, you know, pound the snot out of some mallard ducks, uh, get last year's if we could, you know? And um, it, it was very obvious in that first day of scouting that that wasn't gonna happen. So, so we kind of dug deep and channeled our inner goose grinder and decided that, you know, for the first couple days until we 
really found the ducks good or maybe we didn't know whether we'd find them at all but we just figured we we're going to make do with what we had and that meant we were going to have to shoot some geese and so we found a couple of small loaf ponds stuff that they were coming to during the middle of the day and figured if we shot them in the morning there'd probably be a few ducks that come to it um, but I mean ultimately here we'd driven 30 hours and now we're shooting geese geese that we left in Somerville, Tennessee two days before. And that's all right. I don't mind shooting geese. Get him! Okay, get him! Back. Back. I just killed all three of those critics. We need to get in here. Some of these snow is going. Yeah! <laughs> Good shooting! Back! Okay! Stay! <laughs> Kill him! Stay! <laughs> Okay! We came into this one limping. That group of geese right there just left worse than limping. I don't know what you call them. We just matched their guts. We shot a bunch of them the first couple days. Uh, but we didn't drive 30 hours to shoot speckled belly geese and snows and a few honkers mixed in. And we drove all that way to shoot mallard ducks on a dry field. And, uh, you know, they didn't make it easy on us the first couple days, but you give a couple southern rednecks enough diesel fuel and daylight hours, and we're going to find those mallard ducks and we're going to shoot them.
and we did. <laughs>